Alright guys, in today's video we're going to be talking about the PlayStation 5's secret sauce. And I'm calling it that because that is in fact what AMD called it when they talked about them working with Sony on developing the PlayStation 5 and the specs for the PS5. And a lot of people are wondering, what is this secret sauce? People are very understanding of the fact that whatever is going to be in the PlayStation 5 that Sony and AMD work on, it's going to be highly customized. And the big question is just how customized is it going to be? Is Mark Cerny, the architect of the PlayStation 5, is he going to be able to really pull some stuff off that nobody saw coming? And it seems as though he just might actually do that because recently an individual on Twitter came across a patent that is somewhat old. I think it was uh, filed in 2017 and that has some people concerned. However, I would argue that that is exactly when Sony was probably you know, starting development on the PlayStation 5, so it makes sense for the timing of it there. And in this patent, there's a lot of very complex stuff here, and this individual who goes by Josh at Liquid Titan on Twitter, I will have it linked down below so you can check out the thread for yourself, tried to explain it the best they could, and I'm going to try to explain it even further, not in a more in-depth way, in fact, in an opposite way, where I'm going to try to convey to the gamer who maybe is wondering just how powerful and how capable the PS5 is going to be, what does this ultimately mean if it does turn out to be true? Because if it is true, if this is in fact the customization, the so-called secret sauce that Mark Cerny and AMD have uh, conjured up here for the PS5, it is pretty significant and it ultimately means, and this is the most important part you have to pay attention to because we're about to get into some complicated stuff, at least in my opinion it's complicated, what you need to know ultimately is that if this is true, Sony and Mark Cerny have found a way to essentially extract more out of less when it comes to the PS5, which is a good thing because it means we could end up getting a much more capable console than we thought for potentially a cheaper price point. Now this is where the conversation gets very interesting because we've talked before about the idea of Sony releasing a $400 console. Would a $400 PS5 console be able to compete with say a $500 Xbox Series X console? Because at this point it's more than obvious that the Xbox Series X is going to be a monster console. It's going to be extremely powerful. We saw that Phil Spencer put the actual um, Xbox Series X I don't know if it was the GPU or the, the AP or whatever, but he put it as his profile picture. The SOC, I think, is what it was. And it's very large. It's very large. And it's basically signifying that, yeah, this thing is going to be a very powerful console. And as Digital Foundry said themselves, because of that, it's probably going to be a pretty expensive console. Now, is it going to be $600? No, I, I just don't see that happening. There's no way Microsoft would ever create a console that would be $600 and then make that the console that they're going to lead with. There's just no way they would do that. I think it would be $500 max. And so a lot of people are assuming that if Sony doesn't make a $500 console, that automatically means it's going to be significantly, and that's the key word, significantly less capable than the Xbox Series X. And I have been saying for quite some time now that regardless of which console ends up being more powerful technically than the other one, it's not going to matter. You're not going to see that big of a difference. And so this is where we kind of before, you know, I'm, I'm just prefacing all this so you understand everything that's going on here. This is why I've said in my past video that focusing on the T-flop number, the teraflop doesn't matter because we saw that leak that came out. The PS5 is going to be 9.2 teraflops. We also heard, you know, a lot of Xbox fans saying Phil Spencer said the Series X is going to be double that of the Xbox One X. So that means it's going to be 12 teraflops on next-gen architecture, on our DNA 2 and whatnot. And so a lot of people were suddenly running with this and, you know, even I speculated upon it for some time. But then I came to the conclusion after doing some research that the teraflop is not an accurate measurement this time around. There's going to be a lot of differentiating factors here. Uh, you're talking about whether it's, you know, a GCN, RDNA1, RDNA2, and then you're also factoring in um, the customization aspect when it comes to the APUs here, which, you know, the APUs for both the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X are going to be highly customized, and that leads us to this information. So this individual says, patent filed by Sony, aka Mark Cerny himself, states that PS5 has SIMD, single instruction multiple data implemented into each IPC, standing for instruction per clock. 
This means the PS5's GPU slash CPU, the APU, can execute more than two instructions per cycle. So he goes on to explain here in another tweet that what this ultimately means is that the PlayStation 5's APU has been significantly customized by Mark Cerny if this ends up being what is in fact inside the PlayStation 5. And what it truly comes down to is that this is rewriting the teraflop equation and it, you know he goes on the same number of shaders gpu clock speed instruction per clock usually two but here it could be three and what that's ultimately going to mean is that if you are measuring in teraflops and you are looking at the instructions per cycle and there's actually more than two going on 2.5 or three this will ultimately result in a higher t-flop count and in other words a more powerful console in general a more capable console i mean everybody wants to talk about the t-flops here again this is where you're seeing if this is true this is sony getting more out of less and in case you're wondering what this uh means when it talks about the um you know the actual instructions per cycle well it has to do with the compute units and so essentially what the PlayStation 5 is rumored to be at in terms of compute units which is you know what is it's the GPU strength is basically measured in we know that um, everything that people are talking about now all the information that's floating around the Series X is sitting at about 56 roughly compute units which is huge like that's pretty big uh, and that's where you're gonna see a big difference potentially between the PS5 and the Series X. However, the PS5 is supposedly sitting at 36 compute units. But if this is true, if this is in fact the secret sauce that Sony and Mark Cerny are implementing into the PS5, you could potentially see these compute units doubled. So you're not just looking at 36, you maybe could be looking at 70 or 72 compute units. That is, if it is in fact doubled, it may just be 2.5, but even then, you're gonna see a significantly higher number. Now, I don't know if this is something, and this is where I have to you know, make you guys aware of my ignorance here. I don't know if this is something that is already frequently implemented into other devices, if this is something that's brand new and cutting edge, or if it's something that's been used for quite some time. Maybe this is where you know somebody in the comment section or a few of you can educate me here. But basically what I'm reading from this and what this translates to me is the person who I don't like to get too deep in the weeds with this technical stuff. It's hard not to when you know I run a YouTube channel, obviously, where people are relatively interested in this but I'm limited in my knowledge, what this is ultimately telling me is a couple things here. First, it's telling me that because the PS5's secret sauce is essentially saying that whatever the PS5's APU is going to be is going to be highly, highly customized, it's maybe not worth measuring teraflops at all. And the same goes for the Series X because that's also going to be highly customized. Um, it also tells me that if we were measuring in teraflops, this would explain why the numbers, you know, we've seen a lot of um, people with supposed trusted sources claiming that the 9.2 teraflop number is incorrect. It's significantly higher than that, right? And it's not going to be that low. This would make sense. This would explain that. And What's weird is that we have continually seen people throughout 2019 claim that, uh, and these are when we say people, we're talking about insiders claim that the PS5 is outperforming the Series X or Project Scarlet at the time, whatever that was, you know. And and you know we have to understand those were dev kits, and as time goes on, the dev kits get updated. In fact, the last thing I heard is that apparently the most recent time. Uh, dev kit update that Sony put out for developers was actually right before Christmas. So yeah, we're gonna have to see about that. But what this is telling me here is that the PlayStation 5 is ultimately going to be a machine. If this is the secret sauce, it's going and it's this does kind of make sense for Sony what Sony's trying to achieve here. They're going to try to make the PS5 a console where rather than just, you know, kind of beefing it up and bulking it up and just, you know, using just raw power itself, like, you know, adding more silicone and whatnot and, and, and just more raw compute units, they're going to find ways 
through customizing the APU to be able to essentially achieve things that I don't want to say like shouldn't be possible because that sounds too dramatic, but essentially achieve workarounds. So like if we want to be able to output a game um, that would that could really only be possible with say like 50 compute units, right? Uh, but our GPU technically only has 36. This is the workaround you're seeing right here. This is where you're talking about, um, you know, uh, two instructions per cycle. Well, if you're just doing that and, you you know, that gives you 36 compute units and you have, you know, 36 compute units at two instructions per cycle, you're not going to be able to do um, some of the things that you're hoping to do with some of these games. However, if you find that workaround, which somebody like Mark Cerny seemingly can do here uh, through customization, suddenly you are finding a way to get more out of less, technically speaking. So I hope that this kind of explains things a little bit here. I'm sure that some of you are still going to be a little bit confused. I'm still a little bit confused myself again. I don't know if this is something that's brand new or if it's ever been utilized in consoles before. Maybe it has. I think I saw somebody point out that this is something that the PlayStation 4 Pro already utilizes and somebody tried to make fun of that saying don't expect much yet some of the best looking games you see are on the PS4 Pro so it's it's going to be interesting um I just I felt that this was too significant not to talk about because this could in fact be exactly what Sony is trying to do here with the PS5's APU in general highly customizing it making it much more capable than it may seem on the surface and we could end up seeing, and I know people don't want to hear this, a $400 PS5 that is much more capable than people might want to believe. Now, will it be more capable than the Series X? Well, that has yet to be seen. We still don't know. We don't know everything about the Series X, and we certainly don't know everything about the PS5. But I'm going to stand by what I've been saying. I do think the PlayStation 5 will still be a $500 console. And I think that the difference between the two, you know, even if I could see the Series X basically being a little bit more powerful by the end of it all. But I think that Sony's going to prove just how effective being, uh, you know, how effective it can be to customize the APU to a very great length to the point where you are able to achieve things on uh, with hardware that technically you wouldn't really expect it to be able to achieve. That's that's basically what I'm getting from this secret sauce, from this patent, which could be the secret sauce. However, I need to end this video by saying this could be nothing at the end of the day. It is a single patent. It could be something that Sony was looking into and maybe possibly trying to implement into the PS5. In fact, maybe this could even be in line with the older leak we heard about where apparently Sony's original plan was to have the PS5 out by 2019 and it was basically going to be a PS4 Pro Plus. And then we heard that they kind of scrapped that idea once they got caught wind of what Microsoft's plans were. And they said, you know what, we want to be able to beef this thing up even more. Maybe this patent is referring to something older, an older method that they plan to use with their PS5 APU. But I don't know, guys. I don't know. I just thought that this would make for an interesting conversation. I did tell my Twitter followers that I would do my best to make a video and try to explain this. And I'm sure, here's the thing, I'm sure other people are going to make videos explaining this way better than I did. I just can only hope that I'm not that far off the mark. I'm not sitting here claiming to act like I know everything and because I don't. I really don't. But what this tells me is that if this is in fact what Sony's going for, they're trying to squeeze much more out of much less than they would normally be able to do through customization. So there we go. Let me know your thoughts about this down in the comments below. Leave the video a like if you did enjoy it or if you found it informative or if you just, you know, enjoyed my commentary in general. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and haven't already. Hit the bell notification icon so you never miss an upload and feel free to share this video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.